Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna make an update on some orchids that you guys requested to see over the past few weeks. And not only orchids actually, we're gonna take a look at the African violets as well, maybe some of the Hoyas. Anyway, let's start with the Jiminy Cricket. Somebody really wanted to see how he's doing. And while he's doing okay, this is the newest growth. It produced this growth this year, but there is no sheath. The growth looks kinda nice, but it's not thick like the older growths. So this is the first and single growth he produced ever since we moved here. So I cannot be really surprised that he didn't bloom. There was the adjustment period and all of that. But the orchid herself looks really, really good. She produced quite a lot of roots. I also tested it for fusarium and I didn't see any ring. So that's good. I don't believe she is infested. And also she is spider mite free. She did have some issues with spider mites in the past. You might see the damage. This is whatever was left. Also, she used to have another cane here, but the leaf yellowed for whatever reason, so I decided to cut the entire leaf because the infection was spreading down towards the pseudobulb, so no point in keeping it and infecting the entire plant. So this was cut and I placed some cinnamon powder that sealed it very well and I really didn't have any issues since. This new growth looks really, really good. Too bad it didn't bloom. But overall, the Jiminy Cricket is doing well. He is growing kind of one new growth per year, at least in my old environment, that's what he did. So it's gonna take a long time until we see this being a bush, but hopefully this year we'll get a flower as well. Okay, next orchid you guys wanted to see was the Vanilla Planifolia orchid. And she is growing very, very well, you guys. This little cutting right here started to take off as well, as you can see. And the older one, of course, is growing really well. Now in the winter time, I did notice the growth is really slowed down compared to how it is in the summertime, but the orchid still looks well. Now, I do water this one in the pot, but I also need to go to the sink and pour water on this rod that I have here because she has roots on that rod. And let me try to find one and see if I can show you. This is, well, this is a newer one. She's tiny. Let me try to find another one. Alrighty, there you go. Do you see the root? It's going inside. And the roots are actually pretty nice looking on this one. If you remember, I had root burn even on this orchid with my previous fertilizer. Now everything works really well. I don't have any more root burn. This orchid really likes to stay in this terrestrial orchid potting mix. Now this is sold as Phalaenopsis potting mix, but it's horrible for Phalaenopsis. It is really well for terrestrial orchids. And it just so happens that the vanilla has a terrestrial portion and an epiphytic portion. So she does really enjoy her medium. I don't really need to water her all that often because this medium is very water retentive, but I do kind of need to spray from time to time this rod. It's a good thing that this one can retain some water as well. It does get a little bit soaked. So I am pretty happy with the rod, but soon I'll run out of it. Let me just show you. See, we're halfway up, <laughs> so probably this summer she will reach the top. Not sure what we're gonna do then, but we shall see. I keep this orchid right there on the shelf and I needed to remove a few orchids to get her down. And she gets quite strong light, but of course it is filtered by my sheer curtain. And she's doing quite, quite nice. Okay, so one of you guys wanted to see the Fusarium infected orchids that I decided to keep. Mainly the back, not the back, the front bulb divisions. How they're doing and well they're not doing all that well i have to say they're not dying but they're very very slow the roots are really not the strongest actually they didn't really grow any roots ever since i separated them so at this point i really cannot tell i cannot say yay they're bouncing back or they're dying it's too early to tell it's winter as well so i'm expecting maybe some better growth in the spring and I can better tell, but for now, they're really not doing much. So all of these four are Fusarium infected, including my Psychopsis. By the way, on the Psychopsis, we're gonna work tomorrow. I, I think he is infected. You can see the leaves, they're not doing all that well. I did see that purple, but this one is growing something. He has a new growth. So we're gonna work on him probably tomorrow. I'm gonna shoot the video today, but you're gonna see it tomorrow. I want to repot him because I suspect there are quite a few dead roots in the pot. I didn't really clean him all that well when I repotted him a few months ago because this type of orchid doesn't really lose roots. That's what I discovered, but now I think he did. I will check again for Fusarium, be more thorough with him and clean up that medium, actually offer fresh new medium. We'll see if that helps in any way. If he's not infected, then yay, but he's not doing well. I mean, the flower spike is drying, actually the tip is drying and there are no nubbins forming on it. 
So the psychopsis, I really don't know what to say. He used to be such a vigorous plant, but something happened. I might buy another one, who knows. And this is an orchid that I received from Ana Maria. If you remember, this is an ICU orchid. This is the Calia alvim. Now she lost hers completely. Mine is infected with Fusarium as well. Hers was infected as well. But mine created this tiny little growth. She is working on another new growth here and the roots do not look all that bad. She actually made a ton of roots considering she did not have roots when I received it. This is a back division actually. So I'm giving her a chance. Of course, she's kind of separated. I would have loved to keep these orchids somewhere else, maybe outside, not in the greenhouse, but it's very cold. I don't really have any other place for them to sit. I do want them to get some light as well. So. Yeah, I'm forced to keep them still in the greenhouse. That is that. Maybe it's not a good idea. But I'm trying to be careful as much as possible and we'll see what happens to them. Um, they're not, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm not yet sure how to go about Fusarium, if orchids will make it or not. Some maybe do, some maybe don't. I really don't know. And I really don't know if cutting the front bulb, which is not infected, will guarantee success. And this point is way too early and whatever I would say might be totally wrong. So I'll just refrain from saying anything right now. Alrighty, another one of you guys wanted to see the Hoeyara and how she's doing. And I don't really know what to say. So I'll show you something that is a bit alarming. That little pigmentation on the leaf looks a little bit suspicious. I'm not going to jump to conclusions just yet, but this potting don't know i don't really like how it looks like the orchid herself well she did create roots and she did create this new growth which is kind of tiny compared to the older growth uh, but the older pseudobulbs do not want to plump up although this orchid did create roots and this new growth looks okay looks good so i am not entirely sure if there is something wrong with this orchid or not at this point so I cannot say she's doing fantastic. Uh, she's a little weird, let's put it like that, and I don't know what that spotting is. It will remain to be seen in the future. Alrighty, along the time many of you asked me about my Malaysian order. If you remember, three years ago I think I ordered some stuff from Malaysia. And the Maxillaria tenifolia is one of them. Oh gosh, this is such a love-hate relationship. This plant never bloomed for me and I'm not entirely sure why because she is a vigorous grower so as you can see right now she looks pretty good. This is a new growth, a new suitable maturing right now. She does have quite a few more new growths that are maturing. Again, never bloomed. I'm trying to give her a heck of a ton of light, try to keep her moist and she does look good but she looks a little weird. What do I mean by that? If I look at the pictures on the internet, I can see the tenifolias growing pseudobulbs on top of each other, looking different than this one. This one looks like a bush rather than anything else. The pseudobulbs don't really grow that high if you consider the mother pseudobulb. So as you can see, they're almost at the same level, just a little bit of climbing. Now, I don't really know if there is something wrong with my particular individual, considering it never bloomed. The not blooming situation might obviously be my fault and something that I did and the care that I provided and so on. And now I'm trying to correct that, but still, it does not look like a tenifolia, growth pattern-wise. Otherwise, with the pseudobulbs and leaves, yeah, it looks pretty, pretty well. But I have an issue with her. I don't know. I have a suspicion she's not necessarily normal. For this reason, maybe in spring I will purchase another tenifolia. I really want to smell that coconut scent this orchid is so famous for and I'm, I'm just waiting on mine and struggling with mine for three years already. It looks good, but it doesn't bloom and it doesn't look like a tenifolia necessarily. So I don't know, I really don't know about this one. Alrighty, this one, I don't think you've ever asked me about it, but I would like to include it because I just spotted something nice on it today. This is the Catlea Intermedia Aquini. I purchased it from eBay, from Catacetum 2 a few months ago, and it created this new growth in my care, which is tinier than the older ones, to be expected. A lot of roots, she's going quite well. And behold, in that little sheath, let's get you closer, I see buds forming, which is totally unexpected. So hopefully this will be a nice display, it will be, hmm, uh, yeah, I think it will be the very first Calia species that I ever managed to rebloom. I've actually never seen a species bloom in front of my eyes, just pictures. So this is quite exciting for me, you guys, and let's keep our fingers crossed that she doesn't lose buds. Alrighty, so one of you guys 
if I'm not mistaken, Habib asked me about my dendrobium parishes and how they're doing. This is my oldest one. I purchased it as a very young orchid and it stayed very young. He's not really growing all that well, never bloomed for me, although he attempted to bud twice and they never reached maturity. They dried. This is his current stage. He looks okay just going into the dormancy. Uh, but yeah, this guy doesn't want to grow all that big and I know that Parishis are not big orchids. In any case, not as big as the Anosmum. Uh, but mine looks kind of tiny. It has a very weird dormancy. It's extremely long uh, or maybe it seems weird to me. For this reason, I purchased another one which is hanging there. Let me get it closer. Alrighty, this is the Parishi that I purchased two months ago from Poland. He is uh, quite a big orchid in comparison to mine and he is maturing this cane. I still water it because the older cane shrivels up but he will stop growing pretty soon and then I think I'm gonna move him outside to get a bit of that winter rest. I'm actually gonna move my uh, older Parishi as well. I think I'm gonna do it today. So I will try to provide a good winter rest for these orchids and see if that changes anything. But yeah, the only reason I purchased this one this year is because my older one is not doing all that great. This one is doing really, really well. I mean, he looks okay. I'm still keeping it mounted because with these dendrobiums, which have a really specific growth with the dormancies and everything, it's not a good idea to disturb them in their growing period. So I am hassling a little bit with it. I'm soaking it every few days and keeping it hanging on my IKEA stand but yeah in the spring if he manages to bloom after he blooms he will definitely go into a pot and next to it is the breast of Glauca which I purchased together with the Dendrobium Parishi and she is doing super super well when I purchased it and I repotted it it really didn't have many roots I found quite a lot of dead roots this orchid was super covered in salts and I don't know fertilizers fungicides I don't know what it was many of you guys told me hey it is naturally glaucus and what you see is that low residue it naturally has uh, no unless the residue actually falls on the medium and in the pot and outside the pot uh, I knew about that but that wasn't the natural pigment not pigmentation the natural dust let's say that this orchid has anyway a little update on it these sheaths i don't know maybe they will bloom maybe not i suspect not because this orchid is currently still adjusting but the leaves have opened the sheaths have uh, poked out of the leaves and what do you know we do have some new roots forming as well so she is doing quite okay she is getting hydrated finally these leaves were kind of wrinkly a lot more than they are now so she's starting to hydrate herself i really hope she'll bloom but i really don't think so i suspect she will not and the last orchid we're gonna take a look at today is the mastavalia and you guys she's doing okay so of course the older leaves they got really damaged on transport and they're all kind of dying off but the new set of leaves takes over the pot they're growing bigger and bigger as you can see the color is really pretty on this orchid the older leaves were quite pale but the newer leaves have a really nice really great quite deep green color and this is not a light issue because they are not highlight plants and they're supposed to be kind of green like this this deep vivid green so i'm really happy with her evolution and quite surprised now she is constantly producing new growth you can see in between the leaves there there are constantly new shoots new leaves growing which is really good news for me and i really hope they will grow bigger and bigger but already in the back here you can see this leaf is looking amazing i think i need to tidy up this orchid and cut away some of the older leaves but this new leaf looks so so well i'm so happy and so surprised with the mastavalia I might actually, I was thinking to check for some more tolerant Mastavalias, more heat tolerant and try to grow some Mastavalias. Now that I know it's possible and actually don't kill them in the first five minutes, I don't know, I'm getting a bit brave. What do you guys think? Should I get more Mastavalias? Are you interested in Mastavalias for the normal home, let's say? And here are my African violet leaves that I'm trying to propagate. I received them from my mother about a month ago. Well, some of them started to grow roots, as you can see. That one in the back there as well, but some did not. And I, ooh, I need to put some more water here. I suspect I need to cut the little stem once again. Usually what happens is the surface rots a little bit or during transport it can get damaged. So cutting the stem can actually help. And let's say most of them have started to root, but there are still some that do not have roots. And I will just cut the stems once again and it's a waiting game. 
But yeah, maybe in a month or so we can pot the first African violets and probably it's gonna take another year for them to be able to bloom if I care for them properly. So we'll see how that goes. For now, they're just uh, still in water, still trying to propagate. Now, some of you guys told me that I can propagate them by placing them in the soil directly. Here's the problem with that. We always had greater success with a water first until the first roots started to initiate. The problem with soil is one, you have a higher chance of infections and rotting because it's soil, it harbors more bacteria. Second, if you have a rotting tip, you cannot see it and you will not know it until the leaf starts to wilt, case in which it's already too late, kinda. In water and transparent jars, it's really easy to see and it's really easy to make another cut and rejuvenate the leaf. And also they do tend to root much faster in water because they have constant hydration hydration and that helps it helps to keep the leaf hydrated and nice looking so it is possible to put them directly in soil and catch them we just happen to not have such a good luck the leaf count that actually caught was lower simply because we could not really see what was going on until it was too late so that's why i'm doing the water thing but obviously if you like other methods of propagating african violets do go ahead i'm just doing what worked for me better in the past Alrighty, these were the orchids for today, the orchids you wanted to see. If you'd like to see other orchids that we didn't see in a long time and we didn't talk about, just let me know down below in the comments. Even though sometimes I might not reply, I do read every comment and I take it into consideration. Make a little note and in my next updates, I'll talk about the orchid you requested. So thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we'll talk about the Psychopsis. Bye! Sad news, you guys, my Belina is losing her flower spike. She's supposed to be sequential. What are you doing? I don't know what's happening, but do you see it yellows from the base to the tip? This is pretty unusual since flower spike tend to dry from the tip to the base. So I'm just gonna check out this orchid really well, see if the stem is okay. I did look, it looks okay, but yeah, it's time to check this orchid out and see if she's still okay.